And we are going to ask um, the clerk to introduce this item, please. Submittal of a resolution that supports operation of Diablo Canyon Power Plant for 20 years. Good morning, okay. Madam Chair, members of the board, Rebecca Campbell, acting CAO. We were at your board on February 27th, 2024, giving your board an energy update. We received direction that day to return to the board with a resolution supporting continued operations of Diablo Canyon Power Plant for 20 years. Our office worked with uh, District 3, Supervisor Ortiz Legg's office on the resolution. The resolution is attached to the packet and she will go over that. I also wanted to let your board know that we received a letter on March 13th, 2024 from Senator Laird regarding the matter. So at this time, I'll turn it over to Supervisor Ortiz Legg who will cover the intent and some points on the resolution. <laughs> Supervisor Ortiz Legg. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. We're gonna take a deep breath here and move forward on this item. Um, th the, we had an energy update on that day and we were just talking about the entire portfolio of where we are and that's where this resolution came forth. Um, and I hope that the, the, in, the intent of the resolution comes through um, and then we can go into some of the other details, but I will start here. Diablo Canyon Power Plant, key climate solution for energy security and reliability beyond 2030. The following resolution is hereby offered in red, whereas climate change has led to increased uncertainty with extreme weather locally, nationally, and around the globe. And whereas on February 28, 2024, the U.S. House of Representatives passed H.R. 6544, Atomic Energy Advancement Act, in a bipartisan vote of 365 to 36 to accelerate nuclear energy technologies and modernize regulations and whereas on March 4th, 2024, President Biden signed the fiscal 2024 spending bill for the Department of Energy allocating 2.7 billion for domestic uranium production with strong bipartisan backing and whereas Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant California's last operating nuclear power plant is located in San Luis Obispo County, has operated safely since 1985 under the U.S. N nuclear Regulatory Commission, Energy Commission, which protects public health and safety and has the authority to shut down DCPP if there are any concerns, and whereas DCPP meets high safety standards with additional oversight for the D Diablo Canyon Independent Safety Committee, along with other third-party experts undergoing the most rigorous assessment of any nuclear power plant in the world, and whereas DCPP is California's largest clean energy generator, operating 24 hours per day, 365 days a year, rain or shine, and is the county's largest private employer with 1,300 head of household jobs, and also provides millions of dollars in annual property taxes for our children's schools, and whereas DCPP is a critical fixed energy generating asset, providing California state, providing California statewide reliability, including 8.6% of California's energy and 17% of its clean energy. And whereas DCPP is currently undergoing an extensive review and process, fulfilling the provisions of SB 846 passed in 2022 to continue operations and until 2030. And whereas these extraordinary efforts by Governor Newsom and the state legislature are appreciated, as are the Biden administration's Department of Energy award of $1.1 billion in credits supporting the continued operation of safe and reliable nuclear energy facilities, protecting thousands of jobs while avoiding an increase of carbon emissions. And whereas the U.S. Department of Energy lists nuclear power as safe and reliable clean energy that helps reduce carbon emissions and address the threat of global climate change, and whereas on December 2nd, 2023, at the World Climate Action Summit 28th Conference of Parties, COP28, to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, the United States joined 20 countries from four continents in signing the ministerial declaration to triple nuclear energy as a key step toward reducing gas emissions by 2050. And whereas signatories to the ministerial de declaration recognize the importance where technically feasible and economically efficient of extending the lifetimes of nuclear power plants that operate in line with the highest standards of safety, sustainability, security, and non-proliferation as appropriate. And whereas the International Energy Agency states that nuclear energy alongside renewables can make a significant contribution to achieving 
nation's sustainable energy goals and enhancing energy security. And whereas California has an important leadership role in technological innovation to advance nuclear applications processes in order to supply the terawatts of electricity for data centers, clean tech manufacturing, electrification of transportation, among many other everyday needs to drive the world's seventh largest economy, and whereas San Luis Obispo County is the sole location in California where nuclear energy nuclear energy is commercially generated, offering significant nuclear expertise, world-class educational facilities, and operational excellence. And whereas San Luis Obispo County follows an above, excuse me, an all the above approach, generating energy at DCPP to you, two utility scale solar plants generating 800 megawatts offshore wind projects, all driving innovations, investment, jobs, and producing carbon free energy. And whereas the San Luis Obispo County respectfully requests the state of California give strong consideration to extending the DCPP operational lifespan up to 20 or more years, up to 20 years or more, Doing and doing so offers certainty, ensures material forecasting, assists workforce planning, drive down costs, and together with renewables, DCPP enhances grid stability and energy security for all our families and communities. And that's where we have the now share, therefore shall it be resolved that the, um, that, that that the Board of Supervisors of the County of San Luis Obispo State of California supports the con and the continued operation of Diablo Canyon Power Plant for up to another 20 years. So that's where we're at with this resolution at this time. Okay, any board questions? No lights on? We're going to open this to public comment. We have several speak requests to speak and we're gonna start with Supervisor Bob Nelson to be followed by Jeff Oslin. the right spot here? That is. Not used to be on this side of the, uh, the dais. <laughs> uh, Chair Arnold and uh, um, members of the Board of Supervisors, thank you for having me here and allowing me to speak. Um, my name is Bob Nelson. I'm the fourth district supervisor in Santa Barbara County. I represent the city of Santa Maria and most of the unincorporated North County. Um, I also serve as the, on the executive committee of RCRC representing Slow County and other counties. I'm on the committee with uh, Supervisor Prashong and it's an honor to serve and um, um, represent all of you guys up in Sacramento on that, um, that body. Today I'm speaking on behalf of myself and my constituents about this important issue. It's a rare occasion for me to be able to come to join you today since we usually have meetings on Tuesday and it's really fortuitous that we have this opportunity where this um, is being presented. Um, it's an, an issue of great importance for both of us, um, both counties, uh, the Santa Maria Riverbed. Oh, sorry, that's a different one. Um, <laughs> just kidding, Supervisor Paul. Um, but no, but I'm here to speak on support of the resolution to uh, support uh, extending um, the uh, Diablo power plant for 20 years. I think it's really uh, interesting that you, the last item you guys had was our work, workforce development board and looking at our workforce. I serve on our workforce development board in Santa Barbara County. And it's really for us, it's a jobs uh, center in Diablo, even though it doesn't locate in our county. We have hundreds of head of household jobs in our county that um, work there. And it's not just the ones that are already existing, the head of the households that are our Little League coaches, our um, Boy Scout mentors, um, some of the pillars of our community that um, you know, bring home paychecks that can actually afford to buy houses in Santa Barbara County and San Francisco County. But it's also our young professionals that are graduating college that want to come back to the community that they grew up in. And um, frankly, you know, we really have the Space Force Space in Diablo as is, is those jobs for those young uh, men and women. I'm a parent of three young adults and they wanna come back here and they wanna have degrees in, in professional areas. And unfortunately in our community, we've become a, a sea of a lot of retirees and low income jobs, um, you know, low skilled jobs. These are high skilled jobs, they're a huge attraction. I think it's really important for career planning for our young people to be able to look forward and see signals from our legislators and our representatives about what the next 20 years looks like as they plan their careers and whether they did choose to stay in the communities that have given so much to them. Um, Santa Barbara County has not taken this up this issue, but I will de definitely take that uh, resolution and talk to my legislative committee about potentially Santa Barbara County also supporting um, the efforts that you guys are making here. So uh, again, thank you for hearing this item and I wanna lend my support. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Uh, Jeff Oslin, and then quickly, I just wanna ask, um, we have 
Senator Laird's office represented, but no speaker slip, Kara, did you? Okay, okay, I just wanted to check. Okay, uh, Jeff Oslin and Jeff will be followed by Gene Nelson. Good morning, um, board. I uh, wanna start out with, I'm very proud that uh, Don Ortiz leg um, went forward with the resolution. I think it means a lot to our county. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, we can have a 5-0 vote going forward with keeping Diablo open. I think um, a lot of things have already been said about you know, funding our schools, funding our county, um, income for workforce, um, keeping good paying jobs here, <clears throat> excuse me. But ultimately, we need the power on in this state and um, Right now, we don't have enough power in the state. There's uh, a lot of evidence by that. When you uh, at the bottom of the grapevine and you have a very large diesel generator that is uh, generating power for electric vehicles, um, those are all over the state now. So taking Diablo offline actually is a big detriment because we're using more fossil fuels and uh, causing pollution issues. Um, I've been one that's always said, I don't like a nuclear power plant in my backyard, but it's open, it's safe, and um, allowing it to continue makes a lot of sense. Those that wanted to close it, such as uh, Governor Newsom, so I actually have to agree with him on this key point, he's the one that pushed it to keep it open. So I would hope that uh, our full board would do a 5-0 vote. Um, I know one of our members of the board, Mr. Gibson, yeah, last time you campaigned, you said you would go along with what um, the folks wanted and Sacramento wanted in keeping Diablo open, and I hope that holds true today. Thank you. Thank you, um, Dr. Jane Nelson and uh, Dr. Nelson will be followed by Eric Greening. Good morning, Madam Chair, board members. My name is Dr. Gene Nelson for Californians for Green nu Nuclear Power. In support of the item 35 resolution, I recently traveled twice to Sacramento and once to Washington, D.C. to support Diablo Canyon extended uh, operations. We also operate a booth at the Slow Downtown Farmers Market. I want to talk about um, a key opposition character. His name is Attorney Jonathan Weisskull. He has been the Vice President and Legislative and Regulatory Affairs at Berkshire Hathaway Energy for 31 years. Uh, he is current chair of the misleadingly named Clean Power Campaign. On March, 20, March 17, 2022, on their Facebook page, they uh, advocated for Diablo Canyon retirement. He's also past chair of CEERT. These actions serve the business needs of Berkshire Hathaway Energy. Since 2014, two subsidiaries have already sold more than $1.1 billion of electricity, mostly from Wyoming coal-fired power plants, essentially all to California, uh, entities via the blandly named Western Energy Imbalance Market. These sales are not subject to the SB 1368, that's Parada, 2006, performance standards which serve as a bar to long-term power supply contracts with coal-fired power plants. BHE can afford media outreach um, to create fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Perhaps this morning's Sacramento Bee article asking if PG&E can pay back the $1.4 billion loan for Diablo Canyon. California DWR Deputy Director Daphne Howe said uh, it's, um, it is incorrect to uh, uh, assume the loan will not be paid back. Diablo Canyon is a safe and 24-7 reliable power plant. It typically produces the equivalent of five Hoover dams of emission-free power each year in a compact footprint. During the December 23, 2003 magnitude 6.7 San Simeon earthquake, which killed two in Paso Robles, Diablo Canyon operated at full power before, during, and after uh, this earthquake. Diablo Canyon is the region's largest private sector employer. 
Um, in 2013, the Cal Poly uh, study uh, showed that the, the local economic benefits exceed $1 billion for each year of operation. This plant is designed to last a century. Keep Diablo Canyon running. Thank you. Thank you, Eric Greening, there you are. And Eric will be followed by Ellie Replay. Thank you, Replay. I'm Eric Greening, and my main question is, what is the urgency of taking this position today? Its primary effect would be to pr pressure the state legislature to change the five years in SB 846 to 20, and the letter from Senator Laird makes it very clear that this cannot be credibly done by simply plugging a different number into SB 846, and that he would not be introducing or supporting such a change. If anything were to move based on the position in front of you in this year's legislative session, it would invite the sloppy gut and amend process on a budget trailer bill, because the season for introducing normal legislation that can go through the orderly information-based process of hearings and relevant committees of both houses is past us for the year. If you want to influence the state process, the time to reconsider this would be toward the end of this calendar year. On the other hand, if your intent is to influence the NRC process, such influence is utterly inappropriate. The NRC charge is to base its relicensing decisions on safety, not on political popularity. Exerting pressure on them to do otherwise borders on the unethical. Thanks to several people who have placed extensive correspondence in the record for this item, you can see the breadth and depth and complexity of safety issues that need to be resolved without slipshod haste before any decision on 20 years or any years is made. I also believe this action is premature until you have a full hearing on the questions I raised about agenda item four. You would be extending the potential for these dangerous and eruption, disruptive emergencies and emergency responses to another generation, many of them not yet born. Finally, a 20-year extension would lay waste to current arduous staff efforts on the decommissioning plan. Its EIR would be stale in 20 years and would need to be redone for scratch. I have yet to hear a reason why this needs to be done today or who is pushing for it to be done today, but there is absolutely no reason that it could have any constructive effect on any process of evaluation now taking place in any venue. So please hold it off and uh, reconsider all of the issues that need to be thought of before you act. Thank you. Okay, Ellie Ripley, and Ellie will be followed by Mike Brown. Um, hello everyone, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I was a tour guide at Diablo Canyon Power Plant for 23 years. So I feel like I have a practical experience and knowledge of the plant, not only of the plant and of nuclear power, but of transmission and distribution in the grid. So what I'm here to say is that no matter how many wind turbines and how many solar installations there are, it's never gonna equal the amount of power that Diablo Canyon provides. And so just to make this very brief, I'm gonna say, Mother Nature did not provide on and off switches for intermittent energy. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Brown and Mike will be followed by Ben Higgins. Uh, good morning again, Madam Chair, board members, Mike Brown representing both CoLab of SLO and CoLab of Santa Barbara County today. Uh, we have combined members uh, approaching uh, 1,800 or more, which in turn contain uh, thousands of family members who are dependent on the local economy. Today, your issue is would you support the extension of the plant for 20 years rather than five years? And in the nuclear power business, 
um, and large industrial efforts, uh, five years is a very short time. So it would be much better uh, in all ways, and particularly from the standpoint of economies of scale and the safety analysis, that uh, this be cast as a 20-year effort rather than a five-year effort. Um, we wouldn't want to have a study done of only five years um, in terms of the environmental and safety issues when 20 years would be much better and much more practical. Um, so you as a, you know, lay people in terms of energy and everything, your basic issue is um, the policy to extend it. The NRC and a variety of other agencies are gonna be down in the weeds of all these technical safety issues, and that's their job, and, and they will do them. Um, but it, you know, I testified a few weeks ago um, at the uh, local Western version of the NRC board, um, you know, about this, and it was crystal clear from their opening presentation that the opinion of the local community is taken into consideration in their deliberations. And, and they spoke about that. And so it's not just, you know, some very scientific uh, effort. So it would be really important if you believe in energy safety in economic safety and actually the technical safety for you as the host county to go on record five zip uh, to have everybody look at this as a 20 year effort. Um, either way, um, it's gonna get the safety check and the extra 15 years would enhance everything provide for more transition if that's actually gonna occur. So thank you very much and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Ben Higgins and Ben will be followed by David Weiss. Chair Arnold, members of the Board of Supervisors, my name is Ben Higgins. I'm speaking here today on behalf of the San Luis Obispo County Cattlemen's Association and our hundreds of members countywide. We strongly encourage passage uh, of this resolution and appreciate uh, Supervisor Ortiz leg your leadership in, in bringing this forward. Um, certainly, there will be challenges associated with a 20 year extension. Uh, but this is a very first step. And, and we believe an important one to increasing energy affordability, abundance, reliability, and sustainability in the decades to come. We encourage your support. Thank you. Thank you. David Weissman and David will be followed by Lori Wolf. Good morning, Council David Weissman, Alliance for Nuclear Responsibility. Um, in your analysis of the resolution, you have under financial considerations that the county receives approximately 3 million fiscal year 23-24 in unitary taxes attributed to DCPP assessed on PG&E from the use of transmission and distribution lines in San Luis Obispo County. It is assumed continued operation of DCPP would continue the receipt of unity taxes countywide. It is the $3 million figure that you may wish to question when you make your assumptions because in a sworn data response to discovery requests in the most recent PUC proceeding, the utility reform uh, network asked PG&E, please explain why table 1.1 indicates that once the plant is fully depreciated in 2025, property taxes will be calculated on the land value and that the amount during these extended operations would be approximately $1 million a year, that is not $3 million a year, and PG&E's answer was, for the lean date of January 27 and after, the plant is expected to be fully depreciated as submitted in the 2023 general rate case application, PG&E expects to continue to pay property taxes on any remaining assets on our regulatory books and records such as land. So the $3 million estimate of anticipated revenue may actually be only $1 million, which is a 66% reduction in what you expect. Likewise, there's the money the county receives from the Community Impacts Mitigation Program approved in the PUC decision. And again, a sworn uh, testimony, uh, PG&E was asked, 
Please identify, or excuse me, does PG&E expect to make any additional payments to local governments be besides those authorized of $85 million in the PUC decision? And their answer is not at this time. Next question, is PG&E considering whether to seek funding for additional payments to local governments for the same purposes as in the community mitigation program in a future application? And PG&E's answer is not at this time. And that was the money that the counties provided. I would also bring your attention to the final, uh, finally a sentence in Senator Laird's letter. There are other issues also worthy of consideration. If Diablo Canyon Power Plant were to continue 20 years from its current time, it would not likely justify transition pay for workers as SB 1090 and SB 846 intended, and the implications would have to be explored. In other words, if you take the rates and the 25% bonus for retention for all those workers, and you pencil it out as the PUC will have to do over 20 years rather than just five, you may find that that increased cost makes this decision no longer, quote, cost effective, prudent, or reasonable, as is the charge presented to the Public Utilities Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Lori Wolf will be our next speaker, and Lori will be followed by Gary Kirkland. <laughs> Sorry, I was sitting too long. <laughs> I'm Lori Wolf with the Alliance for Nuclear Responsibility, and thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. I'd like to call your attention to a recent Telegram, well, Tribune news article from March 23rd, exploring the loss of county property tax, and it reports that PG&E is the largest payer of our county's property tax at $12.8 million last year. No wonder Senator Laird said on the Congleton radio program last week, in many ways, San Luis Obispo is a company town where PG&E has a really big orbit. What's going to happen to this sizable sum of money? Sworn testimony by PG&E at the Public Utilities Commission indicates that Diablo Power Plant will be fully depreciated in 2026, resulting in their estimated tax to be about $1 million so solely for the value of the land. This means close to $11 million vanishing from our tax base. The proposed extension will not change this fact at all, no matter if it's five years or 20 years or if it's decommissioned as scheduled. About a million dollars will continue to be paid on the land value until it's taken over by non-tax paying entities. This same resolution was proposed by Supervisor Ortiz Leg several weeks ago with the justification that we just need to get our tax base back. But looking at this issue closely, we can see that this is a train that has left this station and is headed over a cliff. That tax base is not coming back. The money is provided through the settlement agreement to ease the impact of Diablo's closure, the Community Impact Mitigation Program, are also not scheduled to continue to fund the schools, the coalition of cities, or the county, somewhere around $150 million. Don't be lulled into thinking that everything you need to know about Diablo will come from PG&E. You are not, and this county is not, their primary concern. Their stockholders are. You, our supervisors, need to take immediate action, direct our county treasurer, tax collector to verify this information, and develop a plan that does not depend on Diablo Canyon money with or without the extended operation. Senator Laird recommends not endorsing this resolution at this time, and I concur. Thank you. Thank you. Gary Kirkland and Gary will be followed by uh, Joe Rulo. Thank you very much. Gary Kirkland from Tascadero. I want to thank Don Ortiz Leg for showing real leadership on this. That was a brave move on your part. And uh, you got all my kudos for you doing that. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, five or six years ago, when they first announced they were gonna close uh, Diablo Canyon, I got up here and said, you gotta keep it open. This is a fool's game to close this. Uh, and uh, by the way, I assume the workers who live in this county, who get their uh, paychecks, have to pay taxes if they buy a house or they rent. So the money from Diablo Canyon isn't just from PG&E paying uh, their property taxes or their money, it's also from all the workers out there who have to pay their property taxes, their sales taxes, they buy gas taxes, all those things. 
that will keep going unless they close the plant and then all that money will go away because they'll either move away or they won't have a job. And so this is a, an economic issue. Also, all those people, uh, here I'll start with this. I define cowardice as making decisions based on fear. And I wanna quote Julius Caesar, from Shakespeare's Julius Caesar about that. And his comment was, cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once. Of all the wonders I yet have heard, it seems to me most strange that men should fear, seeing that death, a necessary end, will come when it will come. I don't think we should make decisions based on fear. We should make it on reason. So whether Diablo Canyon is dangerous or not, or windmills are dangerous or not, shouldn't be our decision. There are other issues, like having enough electricity to live, reliable, safe, and inexpensive electricity. And that's what Diablo Canyon provides. And I'm all in favor of keeping it open as long as possible. But I also have another pr a proposal for PG&E. If it turns out the current units there are running out and being uh, need to be replaced, then put new plants there. Put two new plants at Diablo Canyon. I understand that there was built, they were gonna put eight there on the original plans and they have the plumbing for four. If PG&E put eight nuclear power plants at that site, it would provide something like 27% of all the electricity needed for our state. And it would make a huge issue and a boon for our county. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Joe Rillo and Joe will be followed by Ed Veek. I am still Joe Rillo and I still live near the Valley. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I support the maintaining the Diablo Canyon plant as, as long as we can possibly have it out there. Right now, we're, there's a lot of talk about the wind, the offshore wind generation and solar replacing this. That's still in the smoke and mirror stage. We're billions of dollars and years and years away from those um, wind generation plants ever going in. And it's, they're somewhat experimental. They've never been placed in that water this deep. And you're talking about something 900 feet high you're gonna need all kinds of chains and everything else to hold it. The, there'll be a lot of in, um, environmental issues to be concerned about this thing. And what happens if we close Diablo in five years and the, the wind generation plants don't go in and the solar can't replace this stuff? We're sitting here worried about taxes, but we'll be doing it in the dark. We need to keep Diablo open because there is no alternative. So thank you. Thank you. Ed Feig, and Ed will be followed by Dr. Bruce Jones. Oops, can't read what I wrote. Well, it's good to hear some positive thoughts about the uh, power from nuclear energy. That's something that the past boards of the supervisors here have always uh, not supported. Um, and in what you said on uh, the, the dais there, I, I think really is apropos. Uh, my name is Ed Veek, I'm from Atascadero. I'm angry and tired of in government uh, agencies cutting down supplies of gas, oil, water, and nuclear power. Even exploration for new oil supplies are impacted. Nearly all products require oil for their production. We are energy deficient majorly. Solar and wind cannot and may never be able to supply the energy required for our republic, our state, or our county to survive, let alone prosper. prosper. A wind farm in Morro Bay will kill migrating whales and produce far less than the cost that they are and the ecological damage that they would cause. Energy in America is already deficient, remember that. Anti-nuclear efforts must stop. We must support PG&E's Diablo power plant license renewal for 20 years. The nuclear power plant could also be a partner in filling our county's water needs because they can produce uh, 
nice clean water from the excess. I know that one supervisor on the board is a globalist as he has signed a pledge to support the United Nations One World Government. He wants to destroy America. To the other supervisors, I say, let PG&E be a supplier of electricity to our county. Let the nuclear power plant be a partner in filling our county's electric needs, thus providing fewer brownouts, more high paying jobs, and tax revenue for our county. Keep the plant open for 20 years. Please keep our energy coming. Thank you, and Dr. Bruce Jones, followed, to be followed by Scott Lathrop. Thank you for this opportunity to speak today. Uh, I am Bruce Jones. I am a retired medical doctor that lives in the Templeton area. The first thing I wanna say is repeat our thanks to our third district supervisor for her February 27th motion to support a 20 year extension of Diablo Canyon. The, the, the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant is a carbon free source of electrical energy. It's an important source. It provides more than 8% of the electricity used in California. This facility is what they call a base load facility. When the wind's not blowing and the sun's not shining, it's still there producing electricity. You all remember the, um, the research of MIT and Stanford regarding uses of Diablo Canyon. And certainly there will be times of the day when the wind is blowing and the sun's shining, and at those times we are likely to have more electricity than we need. Their recommendation was that the excess energy be used to desalinate seawater to provide fresh water for our community. Certainly we need water just like we need power. Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant employs more than a thousand workers who are paid well. This is an economic advantage to our county. It's, it's the one thing we export that generates high paying jobs in our community. A vote to support a 20 year extension sends a message to state, federal, and other decision makers uh, regarding um, the importance of state keeping this facility open. I hope today we will have a unanimous vote to support the extension. Thank you. Thank you. Scott Lathrop and Scott will be followed by Andrea C. Strand. I guess I can still say good morning. We have a few minutes before noon time. Um, uh, before I speak today, again, my name is Scott Lathrop. I'm a resident of San Luis Obispo, and today I'm speaking on uh, behalf of myself, and I also believe um, rate payers and um, taxpayers. Um, before I start my comments, I kind of reminded uh, about a saying that uh, there only needs few words to tell the truth, and so uh, my statement today will be uh, fairly uh, short. Uh, let me start uh, with a quote uh, credited Winston Churchill and revived during the Obama administration. And that quote goes like this, never let a good crisis go to waste. You may recall hearing that. SB 846 is a classic crisis driven legislation. Uh, in the bill, you'll find funding appropriations that have nothing to do with the operation of the plant, but do exploit the crisis. For example, $1 billion for development of weather-reliant renewables, and my favorite, $160 million for conservation and economic development of Diablo Canyon lands. These unnecessary appropriations were only made possible due to the crisis-driven mode. The five-year extension in SB 846 guarantees another crisis in 2030 which will require SB 846 2.0. A 20-year extension would eliminate the crisis-driven mode and keep special interest groups from lobbying legislators for new appropriations that have nothing to do with plant operation. 
a yes vote for the resolution is a vote for eliminating the crisis mode and elimination of future unnecessary costs to consumers and taxpayers. Uh, I would strongly recommend a yes vote for this um, resolution. And I would also hope that there is a 5-0 vote on this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Andrea C. Strand will be Andrea C. Strand, president of the Central Coast Taxpayers Association, representing forgotten taxpayers. And I thank uh, Supervisor Don Ortiz Leg for bringing forth this resolution. And I'm praying that there will be a five to zip vote in favor of this resolution. I think a lot has been said in the last past hour, and so I will just state this, that the CCTA organization and many people that I talk to out there are definitely in favor of keeping Diablo Canyon power plant open for the next 20 years. Please, I personally don't wanna buy any more candles. Thank you. Thank you. Jane Swanson, and Jane will be followed by Dolores Howard. Thank you. Jane Swanson, I'm a spokesperson for San Luis Obispo Mothers for Peace. The proposed resolution includes inaccurate information and flawed assumptions and therefore merits a no vote. I will address two topics, flawed seismic studies and the undermining of offshore wind projects. My comments on seismic issues are all derived from the expert testimony of Dr. Peter Bird, with a 46-year career as a professor of geophysics and geology at UCLA. Dr. Bird finds that, quote, PG&E significantly underestimates the likelihood of a severe earthquake at Diablo Canyon. That likelihood is 47 to 70 times higher than PG&E predicts. Dr. Bird also asserts that PG&E mistakenly assumes that strike slip faulting is the only type of seismic activity in the vicinity of Diablo Canyon. Again, quote, rather, there is abundant evidence that these faults are thrust faults, which cause much more damage to structures than do strike slip faults. Offshore wind is another component of the proposed resolution that is problematic. Senator Laird, author of Senate Bill 846, writes, quote, the federal government has issued three leases for offshore oil in the Morro Bay area, and the process of involving different stakeholders and attempting to resolve differences has only just begun. Therefore, my words, therefore, this resolution is premature. Likewise, Mothers for Peace expert witness Rao Conadina states that, quote, the continued operation of Diablo Canyon impedes the development of other low or zero carbon alternatives to enhance California's power supply because the transmission projects needed to integrate offshore wind could be delayed, unquote. The proposed resolution is not in accord with the facts nor timely. Mothers for Peace urges this board to vote no today and instead to study the views of stakeholders other than shareholders. That includes those living downwind from Diablo and the ratepayers and taxpayers statewide who will be paying PG&E's bills. I must add my disagreement with the description of Diablo Canyon as a clean source of energy. Radioactive waste is lethal for hundreds of thousands of years, and there's no way you can characterize that as clean. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Dolores Howard, and Dolores will be followed by Bruce Severance. Hello, my name is Dolores Howard, and during this comment section, I'm speaking for the Santa Lucia chapter of the Sierra Club. Any action taken to adopt a resolution in support of extending the, the licensing and operational use of Diablo Canyon Nuclear Power Plant 
is extremely premature and is not supported by the Sierra Club. We refer you to a recent letter to your board from State Senator John Laird, which offers a thorough explanation of reasons to withhold premature adoption of this resolution. On March 20th, 2024, Mothers for Peace and Friends of the Earth submitted a brief to the Ninth Circuit Court regarding the ongoing failure to analyze the potential for unsafe embrittlement in Reactor 1. The discussion of embrittlement is cited in Senator Laird's letter. It would be reckless to adopt a resolution in support of extending the operation of Diablo Canyon Nuclear Power Plant at this time. PG&E is required to comply with the provisions in AB 846 and a safety analysis of embrittlement in Unit 1. From Senator Laird's March 13th, 2024 letter, quote, the safety analysis will not be completed until the embrittlement of Unit 1 can be tested, which will not be done until 2025, with the results available no earlier than 2026. We request that you vote no to the resolution that supports operation of Diablo Canyon Nuclear Power Plant for 20 years. Thank you. Thank you. Bruce Severance and Bruce will be followed by uh, Jill Zaniak. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Bruce Severance, Regulatory Compliance Engineer. Um, I, I should humbly just note that I read over 4,000 pages of documents on the NRC docket regarding this topic, really looking at the history going back to the 1980s. I'm told by uh, people that that would make me worthy of being called a subject matter expert. I would appreciate an additional minute of time to address some of the points that I have if I would be given four minutes, given that I have done that work without any compensation, just as a civic. Uh, Sir, right now, just talk yeah, okay. because we, we, we well, allow I, for three minutes per person. That. I strongly oppose continued operation at Unit 1 beyond the current end of license. Uh, at, at which time it will have reached the maximum embrittlement allowed under the Federal Code of Regulations 10 CFR 5061. This is not my opinion, but based on a PG&E analysis published in 2006 and confirmed by independent calculation by the NRC, I've given you a copy of that document, I support continued operation of Unit 2 for 10 years rather than both units for five. Um, where some people get emotional for or against, I'm interested in the facts. The facts are Unit 1 reactor was known to have metallurgical flaws when it was delivered in the 1960s. Westinghouse admitted to that. There's only one other reactor in the country that uses the same flawed materials at this time. Both are considered by the NRC to be the top four most uh, within the top four most embrittled reactors in the United States. I've given you a document from the NRC that, that shows that excerpt, okay? Um, I've also given you uh, a, a document from Dr. Kirk, who's the hired analyst from the, the Diablo Canyon Independent Safety Committee, where on page 40 of part two, he indicates that unit uh, one will reach maximum embrittlement by the 2029 timeframe and recommends additional embrittlement testing I should note that in 2006, uh, PG&E requested and was granted a 37-month extension of operation based on very credible physical lab stress test data showing samples, you know, stress to the point of breakage, indicating that there was an embrittlement trend curve that would lead them to would lead those to suggest that had done the testing that it would reach maximum embrittlement by the 2021 timeframe. In 2006, they were given an extension based on a recalculation with conditions of approval that they had to do further embrittlement testing by 2009, and that testing has still not been done on the basis of deferred testing requirements. Now, I would say this board, in order to make a responsible decision, if you love your children and your grandchildren and you, you value the beauty of this central coast, 
You, you owe it to the citizens to look at these facts and understand the history of embrittlement before you make any kind of ruling today. I would ask you to defer this motion for a future meeting. It, it would be irresponsible Thank to do you. this without further embrittlement testing. Thank you. Thank you. All righty, we have Jill Zaniak and Jill will be followed by Carl Dudley. Um, Jill Zanuck, I live in Rural Grande, Just downwind can't. from Diablo. I echo all of the points made by Senator Laird in his March 13th letter to the supervisors. All of the conditions mandated by SB 846 have not yet been satisfied for a five-year extension, let alone 20 years. The board's resolution to be voted on today is very premature and ill-advised. I urge the board to vote against it. In his letter, Senator Laird noted unresolved issues with the financing process regarding the $1.4 billion state loan and the need to protect utility rate payers and California taxpayers from further rate increases. Senator Scott Weiner, chair of the California Joint Legislative Budget Committee, sent a letter to the Department of Finance on March 6, 2024. He expressed his concern about the need for $400 million requested at this time. He stated, quote, first, I am concerned that the terms of the loan agreements may not adequately prevent the general fund loan from being used in a way that could ultimately benefit shareholders, which is prohibited by SB 846. Second, I am troubled that the state may be required to forgive a portion of the loan. Third, I believe may, we may need to reevaluate the timing of the final two loan payments because of the large general fund deficit, end quote. I submitted this letter to the board yesterday. Another financial issue regards the generous bonus pay that PG&E employees have been receiving as incentive to continue employment at a facility scheduled for closure. It is unclear to me what the agreement is for the five-year extension. Surely a 20-year extension cannot justify this extra pay. Another issue is Diablo Canyon's once through cooling system. It was once called uh, California's largest marine predator by the California Coastal Commission. The Clean Water Act of 2010 required the replacement of this system with cooling towers. The Regional Water Resources Control Board has granted waivers, one in 2016 because of, because of imminent closure, and then again for this five-year proposed extension. An additional 20-year waiver could not be justified, and building cooling towers would be very costly. Again, I urge a no vote on this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Carl Dudley? followed by Linda Seeley. I'm not real sure what I can add, but I've been standing a long time, so I'm gonna try. I'm Carl Dudley, a resident of San Luis Obispo. Currently, I have no elected supervisor. However, uh, Supervisor Gibson has offered to be my foster supervisor. I'm here today to support the motion to extend the Havel Canyons permit to 20 years. The reason is really quite simple. As the NRC regulates the plant, and they've assured us in the past, they have no qualms with shutting the plant down if they feel there is any risk to people or the environment, or if there is any evidence of noncompliance. However, given the long and safe history of the plant by PG&E, I doubt there will be an issue. Most of the plant employees live in the area with their families, and I can't imagine they'd put their loved ones at risk for a paycheck. We currently have no real alternative for power production, and this will give time to design and build alternative sources. If the, part, if the past is any indication of the future, the plant will run safely and the government overregulation will inhibit building alternative sources of power for years to come. Allowing the plant operators 20 years to plan upgrades as the, gives them options should be greater and more financially efficient as compared to a short-term solution. Amortizing improvements over 20 years instead of five is more cost effective for all involved, including ratepayers. I ask that you support the motion to extend the permit to 20 years. Thank you. Thank you. 
Linda Seeley, followed by Barbara Harmon. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Linda Seeley. I'm one of the spokespersons for San Luis Obispo Mothers for Peace. My comments here today, of course, um, I'm urging you to vote no on this resolution. Um, the resolution is ill-timed, as others have said. Senator Laird has, has written you a very um, specific letter about why it, this is a premature um, and unauthorized use of your power. Um, well, maybe it's not an unauthorized use of your power, but it's what it's doing is uh, subverting the safety issues that are very, very deep at Diablo Canyon, especially with the Unit 1 reactor vessel. I'm going to read to you um, Dr. Digby McDonald's, a part of his, or a, an, a summary of his analysis. The Unit 1 reactor reactor's pressure vessel is at high risk of shattering if there is a situation in which Unit 1 must be shut down quickly. They do, they shut down a, a, a reactor by pouring cold water into it if, if, it, uh, if there's an emergency, like an earthquake, um, if somebody uh, makes a big mistake, one of the operators, if there's a, um, an act of malfeasance uh, at the uh, plant. Um, and he concludes that the current operation and proposed extended operation of Unit 1 pose an unreasonable risk to public health and safety due to serious indications of an unacceptable degree of embrittlement in the reactor pressure vessel, coupled with a lack of information to establish otherwise. In Dr. McDonald's expert opinion, the reactor should be closed unless and until PG&E obtains and analyzes um, current Oh, do I only have 12 seconds left? Yes. Okay. Um, it's ironic that you had, the, today, that you have celebrated the Red Cross, Cal Fire, the Month of the Child, and even jobs. And here we are looking at the very things that can be most affected by an accident at Diablo Canyon. Please vote no. Thank you, Ms. Seeley. Uh, Barbara Harmon, and Barbara will be followed by Carlos Cortez. Uh, greetings. I'm Barbara Harmon, former Rio Grande City Council member. I've been a resident of San Luis Obispo County for over 35 years. I'm here today to declare my support for Agenda Item 35 and its resolution for a 20-year license renewal of the Diablo Canyon Power Plant. In 2016, when the decision was made to forego license renewal, it was in part because renewable energy resources would be in place and offset the loss of Diablo Canyon's in-state electricity generation. However, the transition to renewable energy resources has taken longer than originally projected and is not yet sufficient to meet demand. A recent study by the California Energy Commission determined that it is prudent to extend energy production at Diablo Canyon to protect against energy supply shortfalls. Supporters of Senate Bill 846 agreed and although that bill is for a five-year extension, experts now concur this time frame is not long enough, especially when one considers the annual 18,000 gigawatt hours of electricity that is provided by Diablo Canyon. This gigawatt hour supply supplies about 9% of California's in-state electricity generation, which is equivalent to about 3, 000, uh, 3 million homes. Not only are there huge economic benefits to our community from the continued operation of Diablo Canyon, 
there are huge benefits related to air quality and clean emissions. Diablo Canyon is the largest clean energy producer in California. The ongoing increase of electric bills further support Diablo Canyon's license renewal in that nuclear power is by far the cheapest source of electricity that operates 24-7, 365 days per year. We are fortunate to live in a pristine environment, an environment protected by the acute safety measures and environmental stewardship provided by PG&E. Relicensing Diablo Canyon would assure our air quality by providing a reliable, zero emission, safe and affordable energy source, not just for Californians, but for part of the Western electric grid. Respectfully, I urge you to vote unanimously to support the licensing of Diablo Canyon for the next 20 years and for generations to come. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Carlos Cortez, followed by Lindy Hatcher. Carlos Cortez, not here. Lindy, sorry, I, I looked up and suddenly you weren't there, so I, I could have passed on you. Uh, Lindy Hatcher followed by Jeff Chambers. Good morning, supervisors, or actually it's afternoon now. I'm Lindy Hatcher, representing the Home Builders Association of the Central Coast. Uh, we support the continuance of Diablo Canyon Power Plant. Um, electricity demand is at an all-time high. We have all electric homes, we have electric vehicles in increasing quantity on the roads and demands for, um, and regulations for electric vehicle chargers, all of which require more energy, not less. So Diablo Canyon currently provides 9% of the state's electricity. From a housing perspective, that 9% powers three million houses. That's a huge amount. And right now, it's not logical to sunset Diablo Canyon until we have replaced that power. We have plans in the works, but we don't have the means established to replace that power at the moment, or probably not even within the next five years. So what we're looking at here is the need not just for power, but to power housing, to power all these mandates that, that are coming down. And, and now we're talking about big trucks and more power generators and charging on site at our building sites. And all this is coming down the pike and we need more power, not less. Uh, we uh, toured the power plant just last week and I have to tell you, <laughs> the building that the reactors are in is the most structurally sound building I've ever been in in my life, or stepped foot in, or even thought about stepping foot in. Uh, the marine life was thriving. You hear people talking about how it's um, hurting the marine life. I mean, we saw no fewer than five species of birds. We saw dolphins, we saw otters, and, and it was thriving out there. Um, Diablo Canyon Power Plant is also the number one private employer, the largest private employer in the county, and we need them for economic developments. They support our businesses, our restaurants, and um, local tourism up and down the coast. And if we're talking about the environment, um, I just have to ask this question. So solar is the end-all, be-all that's going to replace uh, all of the um, the uh, nuclear power, and what are we going to do when all these solar panels with 20-year shelf life come time to bury them? What are we going to do, bury them in a desert somewhere? I mean, there are drawbacks to every source of energy. So what we need to do is find solutions and not problems. So there's opportunities uh, that need to be researched, that need to be found, and um, we ask that you vote in favor of the 20-year extension. Thank you. Jeff Chambers, and Jeff will be followed by David Gray. Hi, Jeff Chambers. Um, as CEO of the South County Chambers of Commerce, I'm here to discuss our support for the Diablo Canyon Power Plant within our community and its contribution to California's energy landscape. The support from Governor Gavin Newsom and the state legislator through SB 846 
has been pivotal, pivotal in providing PG&E with a roadmap for extending DCPP's operations. The legislative action underscores the plant's significance, yet it's the collective decisions of state agencies and, and the securing of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission license that will determine our course. DCPP is more than a power plant. It's a community pillar, employing approximately 1,300 residents whose daily lives and contributions weave into the fabric of our local economy. The vitality of our businesses, schools, and broader community is intertwined with the continued operation of DCPP. Our state's ambitiously moving towards renewable energy resources to combat, combat climate change, a transition we support. However, this shift has yet to match the pace of our growing energy needs. The California Energy Commission acknowledges the wisdom in extending DCPP's operation to prevent shortfalls during this critical transition. Diablo Canyon Power Plant's zero emission energy is crucial for meeting California's climate goals in the interim. From the perspective of South County Chambers of Commerce, supporting the continued operation of Diablo Canyon Power Plant for 20 years aligns with our commitment to a sustainable, reliable energy future that fosters economic growth and community well-being. I urge you to support the safe, extended operation of Diablo Canyon. Let's work together to ensure a seamless transition to renewable energy, safeguarding our communities, energy reliability, and economic stability. Supporting item 35 is just not a vote for energy, it's a vote for our community's future. Thank you. Thank you. David Gray, and David will be followed by Barry Price. Good afternoon, supervisors. Thanks for allowing me to speak today. Uh, I support the resolution that uh, supports continuing operation for Diablo Canyon Nuclear Power Plant for 20 years. Um, I, I reiterate what so many have said before me about its uh, uh, our need for reliable electricity production, that, it, that the Diablo power is carbon free. And earlier in item 34, the, the, uh, the update on the state of the workforce uh, research was saying that we need the tier one jobs. And if this closes down, just think of the, the thousands of tier one jobs that are gonna be uh, terminated. And then was, some had spoke about worrying about the safety. Well, that's not part of this resolution. That's the, N that's the NRC's job to worry about the, the, uh, the safety. This is the plan, 20 years. It makes um, much sense, it's efficient and uh, I urge you all to support it. Thank you. Thank you. And Barry, followed by Joe um, Schachterner. I know I didn't pronounce that right, but thank you, <laughs> correct me. Thank you, Madam Chair and Supervisors. Uh, I'm not usually someone who's short of words, but uh, the folly of this reckless and ill-conceived uh, resolution uh, really left me gas gasping. It's a shocking display of disregard for carefully crafted legislation, uh, public safety and public opinion. Uh, now you've already received a strong reprimand from Senator Laird, uh, one of the most astute and knowledgeable legislators in the entire state. We're lucky to have him as our, as our representative. That should be enough to get you to put back on your good government hats. So I, I'm not going to replay all the reasons this resolution is a bad idea. Senator Laird and many other members of the public have done that admirably, but just to counter a handful of the uh, misinformation posing as fact in the resolution, there's more than enough evidence now to show that extended operation of Diablo Canyon is not needed to keep the lights on. We have the storage capacity and the demand response sufficient to ensure grid reliability during extreme weather events, with more capacity being added each year. Extended operation of Diablo Canyon is too costly, expected to exceed $6 billion, and that cost burden is going to be foisted on our already struggling families. Keeping Diablo Canyon online will crowd out and slow down the development of alternatives. And then of course there are the significant safety concerns and unprecedented and persistent pattern 
of deferred maintenance and neglect by PG&E and the NRC that should give us all pause. Contrary to the language of the proposed resolution, Diablo Canyon is not, does not operate 24-7, 365. It was shut down for 46 days back in 2022, and both planned and unplanned outages are not uncommon. Now, I understand the role that Diablo Canyon and PG&E have played in our county's economy, but that plant's going to close eventually, sooner or later. What are we doing now to plan for that certainty and ensure a safe, secure, and just transition for all the residents of this county? Rather than political posturing, can we envision a future without Diablo? Can we envision a future without fossil fuels, a future where we have real racial equity, gender equity, and an economy that works for everyone, no matter what. I urge you to look forward. Let's not continue looking backwards. Uh, please you. table this resolution. Great. And Joe, I'll let you pronounce your last name. Thank you so much. And uh, Joe will be followed by Kathy Perry. I am Joe Shacker. -er. Thank you. <laughs> and I came here just to listen, but here I am. I ask all of you to stick together on this one. Vote yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Kathy, and I hope I got your name close. <laughs> and then uh, I'll ask again for Carlos Cortez if he's back in the room. Got okay. um, I'm Kathy DePerry. Um, just here as a citizen. Um, I am concerned that there's a lack of true facts when it comes to uh, Diablo being a green energy, clean energy. For 45 years now, it's been spewing radiation, which the Cattlemen's Association should probably do some tests on their grass because cows eat the grass that this stuff lands on, um, as well as economically, um, there wasn't foresight uh, back in the day thinking about supporting our schools and stuff with tax money coming from Diablo, because if it does disappear, uh, they're gonna have to come up with that money from somewhere. Um, it's unfortunate that Diablo workers, yeah, they don't want their jobs to end because they've made such money, good money, uh, I don't know, I think someone said 1,300. That's only a small portion of the population in this county that work there. And yes, it is a company town. And yes, Diablo and pg and &E have paid off a lot of people to, to continue to uh, let them believe that what they're doing is a good thing. Um, just wanna read this short little thing that came from Gavin Newsom's office. Um, what you should know, California has increased battery storage by 757% in the last four years, and now has enough to power 6.6 .6 million homes for up to four hours. Essential progress in cutting pollution, fighting climate change, and creating a more reliable grid. A lot of people have said that Diablo is really safe. Well, thank God for the Mothers for Peace because they wouldn't have been if they didn't listen to them over the years, and that's one of the reasons that they haven't had an accident. And I don't live in fear, but I do believe that uh, decisions should be made taking safety into consideration. Safety is really important, and the embrittlement of the reactor is no joke. And your financial situation is gonna be even worse if something happens out there. And you're gonna have a lot of money to be putting out for taking care of business. Um, I think that it is really short-sighted to be making a decision. It was short-sighted to even extend it for five years, let alone 20 years. And most of us that are against the power plant know how the NRC operates and that the NRC has made decisions on the basis of PG&E's and the nuclear industry getting handouts like $1.1 billion. Um, 
it's really not economically viable to keep that power plant open. And those of you who think that uh, it's all hunky-dory out there because you see wildlife. Your time's up. Yeah. There's a lot we, of fish. We need, we need to just There's a conclude. lot of fish being killed. So I Thank ask you to you. not support Thank you. Thank the resolution. Thank you. Okay, that concludes our request to speak. Um, I don't see anyone coming forward, so I, I presume then that we called out everyone that had an intentions to speak. We'll close public comment and come back to the board for deliberations and comments. Thank Supervisor you. Ortiz -like. Yes, thank you. Thanks for everybody to come out. Um, I really appreciate, I think that, um, the one thing that I really wanna state clearly is that this resolution was based on climate it's based on um, activity that's been happening around the world and in the nation in these last um, years where we've really begun to understand what our challenge is in regards to um, energy generation. And so the title is um, Key Climate Solution for Energy Security and Reliability. That piece is critically important and I think four hours of storage are important. Wind farms are important. All of these pieces come together, but the, but the, the fact is, is that um, I didn't say it, uh, the Biden administration said it, it's clean energy. And so um, when we're trying to combat carbon, that we have to look at everything we have. And we have a plant that has been operating safely, cleanly. And one of the pieces that I really wanna address here, um, and then I let my colleagues speak, but I wanted to, I wanted to hear everybody. I, I kind of thought that, you know, it's interesting because I, I, I think that I could probably make both sides mad enough with my statement. You know, I, I believe in the United Nations and I believe in, um, in, in climate change. And I believe in um, all energy solutions that are carbon free. And I think that it's really great to have oversight. And I think it's great to have the specialty of people that their interest to go in and dig deeper and ask questions and all of that. That's really important. And safety is important. That is implied in, in all of this, all of it. And so to make it light like this is some irresponsible thing, the fact is, is that we need to have this conversation because our energy situation is not clear and safe. Recognizing that um, AI alone, the, the needs of AI alone is about the, equals the, pow, the amount of power that they new, need for the country of Netherlands. That's what's happening. Things are moving very quickly. We have to be planning for this. This is not something that's irresponsible to be talking about something that's within my district, to, that's within our region to be able to plan for. Now, do I want to hear about the safety pieces? Of course but we have authorities to do that. So I just want to you in, indulge in me for a second. I think that I, I, I want to finish my, my own thoughts here that's not in the resolution, and that is that Americans have been insulated from the harsh, rash, the harsh reality of energy poverty. Our reliance on fossil fuels lulled us into believing that somehow when we turn on the lights, it will produce the power we need. Those days are changing, and it's a painful change. The need to reduce fossil fuel consumption needs to be taken seriously by everyone, those climate doubters and those environmentalists, the ones who oppose the solar farms, the wind farms. Today's resolution is the start of a new conversation, one that has facts, always informs about the extensive ongoing safety. Basically, there's another side to this very one lopsided story that we've been hearing for years, dirty and unsafe, it's just not true. Slow County is fortunate to have one of the most robust carbon-free energy producers of all, nuclear energy, cited right here. And there's an opportunity right here, right now, to help us, to help the world move toward an energy security. Stated in the resolution, this is the opinion of our President of the United States, the majority of our federal elected officials, and members of the United Nations. They see what I see, an existential threat of climate change requiring us to engage in many solutions. Many of our constituents know my former position was with PG&E. I did work from 2018 until I was appointed in late 2020 to the seat. I was a right-of-way agent covering the Santa Cruz to Santa Barbara region. I did not work at Diablo. I have, been I was, I have not been employed by PG&E since 2021. What brought me to the energy business was climate change. That's what brought me to the energy business. In 2007, my pursuit of a master's degree in public policy had an emphasis on climate policy because I wanted to work in a field to act and to do something. In 2009, I began a career in utility scale solar to offset carbon and replace truly dirty electricity. What brought 
what, what many may not know is that I come from a town called Morris, Illinois, home to one of the oldest nuclear power plants in the United States, Dresden. And 25 miles down the road from that is the Braidwood Station. These nuclear power plants keep the Chicagoland area running. At both these plants, our neighbors, my dad's patients, my cousins all worked in nuclear. Both of these plants are also renewing their NRC licenses. This is something that goes on. This is not some kind of a game that somebody's paying off somebody for. It's because it's critical. When I was a young and impressionable woman in the 1970s and 80s, I joined the crowd and opposed nuclear, marched against it. So what happened? Building solar farms educated me to the reality of what it takes to generate power. I love those solar farms, and I love the carbon-free power they generate, but that's what we're talking about here today, and we need it all. The resolution was brought forth for climate and energy needs, the demands of new technology, and yet science is on trial today. The same people who say facts matter and science matters wants to ignore it when it's convenient. I clearly state in this resolution that the state of California has the power to allow Diablo to operate or not. Not me, not this board. That's very clear. It's the state of California, okay? That with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. The state of California determines the ones through cooling, the land leases, through the State Lands Commission, and the CPUC determines the rate making. So what we're, today is about us having a conversation and, and exploring what would be for the future in order to cover those costs, ensure that we're providing the kind of reliability that we're having we're going to have, that we need and we're going to have. The desire to change the conversation from energy reliability and national security to insinuate this as a ploy act and willfully state misinformation and construe the facts is very disappointing. We can debate many things, such as how long it's going to take to lease, permit, and build, tow, and connect the wind farm, but there's no debate on that we're going to need all the carbon-free energy that we can produce. The more fossil fuels that we place every day, the more, electric, the more electrification it comes about. As AB 846 noted, it's clearly in the resolution, in my resolution here, our resolution, that the processes of that bill include ongoing seismic testing, ongoing maintenance reviews, among many other fact-finding reports to ensure the operational safety of this plant. The deep analysis in the report on the embrittlement status of Unit 1 is, is up to 60 years. I submit to the record of the, to the Diablo Canyon Independent Safety Committee's report on reactor vessel, Im, reactor, reactor vessel embrittlement, stating testing, evaluations, and details on how the NRC requirements will progress toward long-term operations on page 42 of the, of, of the report I'm going to put into the file. You know, I, I could go on with all the seismic analysis, the credibility of the scientific s studies that have been in reports provided by industry experts who put their reputation on the line and that people are questioning these things over and over again, no matter how many times they have been illustrated in the decommissioning panel, the independent panel, the impo panel of the people in the industry looking at it. But yet, somehow, this group of people know much more than everybody. But it's okay, you have the right to have the free speech to do that, that's important. I, we welcome it, it's very important. But the point is, is that you're missing the point of the resolution. The resolution is basically calling on what the rest of the world is seeing. And I just wanna finally just note that um, the last couple of months it's been very interesting. Headlines such as US can and should dominate the world's nuclear power resurgence. California unlikely to meet landmark goals for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Nuclear power is having its own moment um, in, in Washington. We're in a res renaissance, folks. It's a renaissance of an industry that has been maligned for a long time. And it's important to recognize the robust nature of this energy as well as the safety. I welcome the comments of my colleague who you know, wants to put out information out on emails and things in regards to that this isn't time, this isn't prime time. I think it's prime time when we're talking about something that is a critical as this is in regards to our reliability of energy. And so I'm going to close my thoughts there and um, welcome the thoughts of my associates. Any lights on, Supervisor Michonne? 
That's gonna be a tough one to follow, by the way. <laughs> that was passion. So I'm gonna be simple, clear, and concise. It won't take us, uh, certainly won't take long. Um, we are in the process of navigating a responsible energy transition. That's what we're doing. And if you look at what the governor has asked, he has actually said that natural gas power plants will be mothballed by 2045, but they didn't give that same thing to Diablo Canyon. Extending it, it makes sense. We must increase the build rate for wind and power generation by five times, which will also be billions of dollars in new spending to hit the governor's goals. And it's gonna take a very, very, very long time with more wind and solar to be able to get that to replace Diablo Canyon. All of the above energy strategy, which this resolution talks about, with wind, solar, nuclear, hydroelectric, oil and gas, can keep electricity affordable for California families. And I believe we must recognize that our energy realities and our challenges that we face going forward only can get there if we include Diablo Canyon staying open for 20 more years. Thank you. Supervisor Paulding. Thank you, Chair. Well, it's nice to be here with you all today, having some <laughs> robust uh, discussion and uh, hopefully some civil deliberations, I'm sure, with our board on a very uh, challenging topic. It's a challenge, uh, challenging topic for me, uh, having grown up here in the community, I've observed it um, you know, the various uh, views and perspectives on all sides of the equation, and now I get to really weigh in on what I think as a, as a local and somebody who cares deeply about our community, its future, um, in terms of uh, having enough jobs uh, for the people who leave, live here, um, in terms of uh, making sure that we have grid reliability at the state level, um, that, we, that we make good decisions as a board in general for the future of our community. Um, some here today have said that this uh, action to adopt a resolution um, that would support continued operations of Diablo Canyon for another 20 years is reckless. I would not go that far. Um, but I would stipulate that perhaps it's unwise given the timing. And I know we'll, we'll hopefully agree to disagree. But if we want the state of California uh, to really be on board with that goal, if it in fact is the objective of this board, we are going to have to work with our legislators at the state level to accomplish that goal. And I fear that this resolution does not necessarily position us uh, strategically with our state legislators who will need to be a partner on that goal. So some of you I'm sure are wondering what is Jimmy Paulding's position on Diablo Canyon? Um, and I will say that because of our grid reliability concerns at the state level, I did support the extension for five years, and I do support the continued operations of Diablo. The question is, for how long? Is 20 years prudent? Do we have all the information as de decision makers at this point in time to make a truly informed decision? And I believe we do, even though we're not the NRC, we don't have regulatory authority over Diablo Canyon, we're not that decision maker, we do have a duty and obligation as local policymakers to make decisions that are truly informed with all the data points uh, available. And in this particular case, we have a duty to make sure that the continued operation for that horizon for 20 years is in fact safe. And so for those reasons, among others, which I'll, I'll get into here in a second, I think it is premature uh, to adopt this resolution. I would of course support a modified resolution. I'm happy to, uh, propose some changes here in a little bit if there's interest. Um, in terms of safety, we know that the embrittlement analysis of unit one will be completed next year. So can we at least wait to uh, adopt a resolution supporting a 20 year extension until we have that information? That would be really helpful. Um, another thing is costs. And we, you know, I was just talking with um, a pg and &E employee who's been out there for quite a number of years about how things have changed recently. You know, initially, um, the decommissioning was on the horizon and um, the objective there was deferred maintenance, um, you know, not making that strategic level of investment. Uh, employees were retiring uh, and what this particular employee indicated is that it's going to be a huge lift to in some cases uh, hire new employees, retain existing employees to kind of turn the ship around and head in, in a new direction. 
And his opinion was the $1.1 uh, $1 billion uh, isn't gonna be enough uh, to really fund the cost of that continued operation. So the cost to me is critical and how much of that cost will be borne by our ratepayers and our taxpayers um, and how we determine what is fair and reasonable. Those are all open questions to me that I think we, um, we as a board would hopefully have answers to before we uh, support this level of continued operation for a 20 year horizon. I also think that the property tax issue that was spoken to by members of the public today needs to be analyzed, the unitary tax, uh, because we need to ensure that you know, our platform, our advocacy platform at the county level uh, fights for our, our taxpayers and fights to ensure uh, that we are fully funding our schools, uh, public safety, et cetera, uh, with the revenue, the maximum amount of revenue that can be fairly uh, generated from the continued operation of Diablo. So I do find it a bit ironic that some of the groups that are very pro fiscal responsibility like the Central Coast Taxpayers Association would support this resolution absent that cost benefit analysis. Again, a cost benefit analysis that we as a board aren't prepared to undertake today um, and aren't the uh, decision makers that will undertake that. We have from a grid reliability standpoint, the California Energy Commission, from a regulatory compliance safety seismic standpoint, that's the Nuclear uh, Regulatory Commission, um, there are so many other key decision makers that will uh, provide uh, high quality data points and information uh, for relevant decision makers to make those decisions. And so, um, you know, while I want to just extend and express my um, appreciation to um, really the, the community for showing up and those who have spoke out and support, spoken in support of Diablo Cannon, I think um, that's great that you uh, want to see us continue to retain those jobs. You want to see the success of um, you know, that uh, industry continue to provide what I, I do think is relatively clean energy for our community. I think there are some open questions that really need to be answered. And uh, for those reasons, I, I cannot support the resolution as drafted today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Supervisor Gibson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate colleagues' um, thoughtful uh, commentary uh, on all this. And I think it's pretty clear from the discussion on the dais that we see that there would be three votes to move this resolution forward. So I'm not sure uh, exactly how much more debate is, uh, is useful given where we are. But I do think uh, before we vote, we should do so with, uh, with a reality check. And Supervisor Laird's letter, uh, which he provided recently, is that reality check. And in it, he details um, quite precisely the substantial efforts that are going on under, uh, under Senate Bill 8, 846. Uh, and uh, I absolutely support that process. And should all the necessary steps be cleared, I absolutely support the, the five-year extension that 8, 846 uh, contemplates. Uh, I am not supportive of this resolution today for the, for the reasons that Supervisor Paulding laid out and simply that it's premature and timing matters. Um, you know, there's a lot going on and it's referenced in our, it's referenced in Senator Laird's letter, it's referenced in our resolution, but there are serious questions of seismic safety, of uh, embrittlement, of maintenance, of finance, there's still $300 million that hasn't been secured uh, or, you know, or verified as the amount necessary to make this all happen. And until those uh, questions are answered, uh, as, um, as Senator Laird indicates in the conclusion of his, of his letter, um, you know, he's not supportive of, of any other um, uh, legislation until they, the process of 846 has played it, itself uh, out. And uh, I think that's, uh, th that's a, uh, I think that's an extremely wise uh, place to be. You know, basically the provisions of Senate Bill 846 are a carefully crafted deal. There's a lot in there, substantial uh, amounts. And if we were to uh, declare our uh, intent to see a, a, a 20 year uh, and, you know, and as we know, 846 is a five-year extension. We're on record now declaring a 20-year extension. We're, we're sort of put in one of two places. One of them is we're issuing a resolution that is at odds with the reality that's underway right now as various uh, uh, 
um, as various uh, uh, agencies take this on. The other, uh, the other position it puts us in is apparently, it's, in, it's based on one comment that I've heard that, that PGE is interested in a 20 year extension. Um, that is a change to that deal. And if that's serious, um, I'm not sure that we wanna be uh, supporting that just yet for exactly the same set of reasons, that there are lots of questions that haven't been answered. And again, those questions get answered successfully. I'm absolutely supportive of a five-year uh, of a five-year extension. We can then think of further extensions um, further. So, um, you know, again, I, ex I expect we're going to see this resolution pass. I'm I'm going to oppose it. Um, I'm going to support the SB 846 process. I think that it is premature for us to take this position, and I think, frankly, it's disrespectful of so many people who have put a lot of work into it, and particularly, it's disrespectful of uh, our state senator. So, I, I think we can get on with it, and we can. Um, uh, we I'd can like move to um, ask a question, please. Sure. Um, so, where did this um, notion that um, PG&E supported this resolution made, or anything? The, what did you made the comment well, just now? Well, no, they support, they, they were on record of indicating they are gonna request a 20 year extension what? in testimony before the Diablo Canyon Independent Safety Committee. And quite clearly, uh, they're interested in that 20 year I think extension. It, I think that's required by the NRC licensing that they said that that's what is happening. I don't think that they said something about um, further, I think that's part of what the NRC licensing. So let's, that's what that's what this conversation always becomes. It becomes a mix mosh of words in regards yep. to try to drive home a point that is, you know, we support SB 846. That's in the resolution. So mm -hmm. we're supporting the same thing. We're supporting 846 right. and the process that goes along with that. And and PG&E indicated that they are going to request a 20 year extension. They have options to do uh, a variety of things. What, extension their, of what are you talking of about? Their license with the NRC. That's what the NRC does. That's that's the way that NRC yeah. they don't they don't think around with five years. They only do licensing at a 20 year interval. So I mean, don't make up things not, in regards I'm to. Not. In regards to, I'm not, you know, I okay, make not, a okay. story. I'm not making, order in the order in the house. I am I, not, I, you know, it's, it's, supervisor, it's, you're not going to provoke me. Into, I'm not trying to provoke into you a, into a, a, a heated debate because I, I, I see where I see where this is going, but it has been made clear to me with discussions that I've had with the uh, process going on in uh, in. Uh, in various agencies in in, Sac in Sacramento is generally centered, is that a request for a 20 year extension, whoever, wh however it comes about, doesn't matter how it comes about, is at odds with the deal that was crafted under 846. And if, if that is the inclination of uh, any of the parties to this, it puts at risk a number of things. It puts at risk the whole deal that 846 put together and in there is, for instance, the $85 million that this county received under SB 1090. So I just, and again, I'm not, I'm not. That does arguing, sound like threats. I'm those not, actually sound like threats. I mean, the threat of, of jeopardizing something that we're all supporting. The, the reason why, the reason why we're talking about this is because exactly for the reasons that have been mentioned today in regards to cost, oversight, all of the things. Five-year terms are very short terms. It, it may turn out, it, it can say up to 20 years. It doesn't have to say 20 more years. It can say up to 20 years. We, If there turns out to be, from all the other reliability that's gone on along with 846, the 846 bill is a great bill. It provides us with the with the requirements of the ongoing maintenance that's ongoing. And, and, and again, I submit to you the Diablo Canyon Independent Study late, latest committee, which just shows how everything is, is up to speed with their maintenance. In regards to seismic safety, it is up to safety right now. As far as the embrittlement, it's operational for right now. And so the testing, will, all of these things will continue on and, and that's the way nuclear power works. It happens everywhere at all of those other plants. And so to try to make it like somebody's trying to get away with something or that we're trying to push something that's um, ir 
irresponsible as well as premature, I think is insulting because one, we here in San Luis Obispo County get to say what we want to have in San Luis Obispo County. We appreciate the people at the state, but we also want to make sure that we here are stating that as the state goes through their processes, that we, we are here to, to say that we want this plant to be operating as long as possible. And so I just wanna make sure that we're not like mixing up things, that we're trying to do something that's not part of the law. We appreciate all of Senator Laird's and all of the other legislators, Senator Dodd, all of the people that have made great effort at, at keeping this plant open for our electrical needs in the state of California. This is not doing anybody a favor other than for us to make sure we have carbon-free electricity for the future. And so, I mean, that's, that's the point that I'm having a hard time with, is that something that was directed as far as the renaissance of nuclear and then turning it on its head to make it seem like somebody's trying to pull something really is, again, extremely disappointing. So I want to submit to the, to the board the records right here that show that everything is safely operating, so everybody understands that right now, that you know we don't have to wait for anything. If something is wrong, it, it will be addressed. But right now, it's safely operating. And with that, I'll... Okay, and well, I have a couple comments. If I we'll... might finish my commentary here. Um, you know, I would, I would note that, the, the, and I'm not quite sure, you know, there's a mixed message here that it's safely operating or there's yet questions to be answered. I can speak with knowledge as regards the seismic safety. PG&E has produced an analysis of the seismic hazard and the seismic risk. Uh, 846 uh, details that the independent peer review panel, which I've served on for quite some time now, is to review that report. Uh, the IPRP, as we call it, has identified quite a number of questions that uh, need to be need to be addressed. And so, um, you know, the the determination of safety is, of course, paramount. It's of course at the center of it. Mm -hmm. It is detailed under the provisions of 846, and it th speaks to a five year uh, five year extension. That's all I'm saying. I'm not I'm not saying I'm opposed to considering a 20 year uh, overall extension at a point, it is simply not the time because of the nature of the enabling legislation, which includes a whole bunch of things, including the incentive pay, where that was SB, SB 1090, but including the, um, including p potential uh, monies for uh, conservation of lands around Diablo Canyon. And again, my understanding of the dynamics of the situation now is that if the conversation gets toward a 20 year rather than a five year extension, then many of those provisions may be reconsidered. So that's why I'm opposing it now. I don't think it's a, a big deal to delay this uh, expression of our interest until we find out what happens in 846, but it's also clear where the votes lie on this, so I think we should get ahead and do it. Okay, well I have a few comments myself to make. And I will be supporting this resolution, and as a matter of fact, I'm very happy that Supervisor Ortiz Lake brought this forward. Um, this has been a concern of mine for a very long time and maybe from a different standpoint. I mean, I think my whole adult life, Diablo Canyon was in the conversation here locally in this county. And uh, of course, um, a nuclear plant was a big thing for years. A lot of you were around for it, same as me. Um, the discussion, the pros and the cons and so forth. Um, in our society, energy projects of this magnitude are very expensive, and in the end, it's the ratepayers, the citizens, the taxpayers that pay for all of it. So um, once Diablo was built and now has been operating for, for decades um, under the stringent o oversight of various uh, government uh, agencies, um, we know, looking in the rearview mirror, it has provided us a just dependable um, and safe uh, source of energy. I was um, really disappointed when policy, uh, political policies uh, c came about that, that started the talk of decommissioning Diablo Canyon earlier than uh, we expected. Um, and then uh, a consequence of that, SB 846, okay, we're planning on closing this early and what are we gonna do about making that happen and then trying to look forward to other sources of energy. 
I um, am very happy, 20 years is, as we all know, I mean, five year increments is surprising and that's expensive too when we don't have the certainty beyond five years. Many of these licenses, I mean, the preparations to renew take longer than five years and you can just imagine trying to run a company that you didn't even know if the doors would be open um, and you should be spending money. And when I talk about spending money, I remind us all, it always comes back to the citizens, the ratepayers, the taxpayers. So all of this, these massive amounts of money that are being spent on the end we pay for. But after all these years, and I um, appreciate everyone, that we, I mean, at the beginning, safety issues, um, environmental issues, it was, it, we discussed, we debated, all of us, for decades of our life. But in the end, um, in the end, I think that my biggest concern now, after all these years, is just the dependability, and some of my colleagues talked about that. You know, there's, we make a lot of trade-offs in life, right? But basics like clean drinking water and food production and our even our food chain, how we get, if we don't have dependable energy and this summer comes along or it's the next summer and we're having blackouts and the food in our grocery stores are rotting and we can't keep food in our freezers anymore and those sorts of things, that can happen if we are not staying prepared. And I, I for one, as just a tax-paying citizen and a rate payer, would like to know that there's 20 years of thought if, that, if for, a future, for a future of a dependable energy source. So I am 100% behind this. I think that it tells the world, you know, we, we host um, Davo Canyon here in our, in our county and that we're prepared to and actually embrace the thought of having that energy uh, source right here and uh, being able to continue. So whenever you're ready to make a motion, Supervisor Ortiz Leg. Well, I am going to, um, uh, Supervisor Paulding, do you wanna add anything in regards to? I think we've had the discussion. <laughs> We have had democracy the discussion. at work. <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to make sure that um, you know. It, it, again, this was just set out to be a conversation. It, it you know to have it turn out to be like you know all of these things. There are states, there are places around the world that wish they had the kind of issues that we have in regards to having a nuclear power plant that can actually generate the kind of energy that it does. I mean, we are blessed to have this facility. Now, does it require the kind of oversight that's been discussed here? Absolutely, absolutely. So I, I think that, you know, I just wanna make sure that in this resolution that we fully support SB 846 going forward and doing its work. All we're saying here is that, um, and that would be my only change here, is that up to 20 years, because we don't know how what things are going to happen out there. That's the point. The, the 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 uncertainty of a climate changing world is creates this kind of mandate for us to do that. That's that that's just how it is today, folks. And that's and that is the goal here is to just allow for that to say that we we recognize we recognize the resurgence of nuclear energy. We have the expertise here. We want to make sure that we demonstrate to the world how we generate clean, responsible nuclear energy, and we wanna do that up to 20 years. And so the resolution as it's written is what I'm saying with, the, with one little change. It says here for another 20 years, and it says up to 20 years. I'm putting up to. Okay, I will second that motion. Is that clear, Councilor? Yes, Rita Neal, so where it says now, therefore be it resolved, uh, yes. supports the continued operation of Diablo Canyon Power Plant of up to another 20 years? Yes, yes. Okay. So just as, yeah. as that, because we know that there has to be this flexibility in regards to other generation coming on, things like that. However, we can also say that there could be excess of nuclear power that could be used to make green hydrogen. We could run desalination plants that was mentioned. There's a ton of opportunity, and that's what this is. This is an opportunity um, document, a vision, not something about a mandate. And again, you know, it's only, it's only a, a expression. These things are just expressions of, of interest. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Supervisor Gibson, did you have a comment? Nope. We're ready to vote. So we'll call for, ask for a roll. 
Call vote, please. Supervisor Ortiz Lake? Yes. Chairperson Arnold? Yes. Supervisor Pashong? Yes. Supervisor Gibson? No. Supervisor Paulding? No. Okay, we're gonna move on to item 36, which is closed session, open public comment to closed session. No request to speak, we'll close public comment and ask council for a time estimate. Yes, Rita Neal County Council, you will be going into closed session on items three, four through 15, 16 and 17. Anticipate it take about an hour, so you might want to come, we might want to come back at two or 2.15. Can, can we get here at two or you think? Two, I idea? think we can get here at okay. two. So um, we're going to adjourn to closed session right now and we're gonna reconvene this meeting at two o'clock and we'll be back.